Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. This simultaneous equation question came up in 2013. It's a little bit troublesome in that we have fractions as part of our equations. Um, so it looks a whole lot difficult, a whole lot more difficult than I suppose a, a normal uh, x plus y plus z simultaneous equation. Uh, so a couple of things to watch out for. The first thing I'm looking for is that the x's are over the x's, the y's are over the y's, the z's are over the z's and they're equal to the number. So at least they're all lined up properly so I don't have to move them around. Um, but the first task I'm going to do in this um, question going to label the equations 1, 2, 3, that's just for convenience, and I'm going to get rid of the fractions, because uh, it's always easier to work with whole numbers than it is fractions. The first one is already uh, whole numbers, so don't need to do much with that. The second one, I'm going to multiply it by 2, the number on the bottom, because that will cancel the fractions. And the third one, I'm also going to multiply it by 2 to get rid of the fractions. So note, I'm not doing anything to solve the simultaneous equations here. I'm just rewriting the equations without fractions. And it's perfectly okay to do this as long as you do it to the whole equation. So I can't just multiply the x piece by 2. I must multiply every piece of it to preserve the equation. And once I do it to it all, then it's perfectly okay to do it. So 2 times 5 over 2 will give me 5x plus 2 by 1y is 2y, 2 by 10z is 20z equal to 80, and then equation 3, 2 by 2x is 4x plus 2 times a half is 1y plus 8z being equal to 42. So now this is my equation 1, my equation 2 and my equation 3. Okay. So from now on I tend to just look at my equations in, written in this form as opposed to the fractions. Okay, And then all of a sudden now it's looking a whole lot easier than the question we were given in the exam. So your next job is to figure out which letter are you going to cancel. Are you going to cancel the x's, the y's or the z's? It doesn't matter. It's whichever one you look down and you think looks easier. I like the look of the y's, so I have a single y there, I have a 2y and a single y here. Okay, so I'm going to do the y's because those numbers are small and therefore easier to work with. So the theory behind this is, is I can only take two equations at a time. So I'm going to take equation 1 and I'm going to take equation 3. Okay, and the reason I'm taking these particular ones is I don't have to do any multiplication of the y's because both of them are already 1y. However, so what do we do? We always add in this case. If I add these at this point in time, you will see that I get plus 1y plus 1y to be 2y. So they don't cancel yet. You can only cancel something to 0. So what I have to do is change the signs all the way across. And I can change the signs of the top line or the bottom line. I'm going to change the top line all the way across. They were all pluses, so now they're becoming minuses. So you get 4x minus that 1x that's there. So you get 3x minus y plus y now cancels. 8z minus 1z. And you can see I'm reading the equation from the bottom up, and that's perfectly fine, that's okay. So 8z minus 1z is 7z. And 42 minus 16 gives me uh, 26. Okay, I just drew a bit there, so I'll just undo that. It's equal to 26. Okay. There's nothing more I can do with that equation right now. It's still got two unknowns. It's got x and it's got z. So I just park it for now and call it equation 4. And I'll come back to it again in a few minutes. Now, if you look up here, I haven't done anything with equation 2 yet. 
So now I need to take equation 2 with any one of the other two equations. And it doesn't matter, equation 1 looks quite nice because uh, it's a single x and y and z. So let's take him and let's take equation 2 with him. Now I've got plus y plus 2y, so I need to multiply the top one by 2. Okay, so let's do that. And I'm going to come over here to do it. So I get 2x plus 2y plus 2z being equal to 32. And then just write down the bottom one, because that's already at 2y. So what am I doing here? Well, to cancel the y's, I need to have plus and minus the same number. So I multiply to the top equation by 2, so that I'd have 2y and 2y. Okay, and just like before, if I change the signs, I'm going to force those y's to cancel. So 5x minus 2x is 3x. My y's have cancelled. 20z minus 2z is 18z, 80 minus 32 gives me 48. Okay, and I'm going to call him equation 5. So you can see in this equation I have x terms and z terms. So it was so, so important in this question that when I took my pairs of equations, so 1 and 3 in this case, 2 and 1 in this case, that I cancelled the same letter. So I cancelled y's here, so I had to cancel y's in this case. And the reason for that is that when I develop equation 4 and 5, you can see that it's the, it's the other two letters that are remaining, x and z, x and z. Okay, if I hadn't done that, if I had cancelled, for example, the x's in this one, Okay, I would have been left with y's and z's in equation uh, 5. So I would have x and z here, y and z here. So between the two of them, I would still have had x's, y's and z. And I would have been no better off. Okay, we have to cancel these equations down until we're at one letter. And then we solve for that one letter. And then we go back and get the other two. So what am I going to do now? I'm going to bring equation... 4 and 5 together. As such, so this should look like a junior cert one now to you with his two letters, two unknowns, and I'm going to cancel one of the letters. And very nicely, the, the threes on both are lining up, so that's going to cancel nice and easy. I'm going to just change the sign so that I have one of them as a plus and the other is a minus so that I get 3x cancelling with 3x, 18z minus 7z is 11z, 48 minus 26 gives me 22. Divide by the number in front of z, and I get my first solution, which is z is equal to 2. Okay, so quite nice. So what do I do now with my z is equal to 2? Well. I don't go back to the original 3 just yet, because if I did, if I did knowing my z, I would still be left with two unknowns, x and y. And you can't solve an equation when it has two unknowns. You can only solve it when it has one unknowns. So what you do instead is you go back to either equation 4 or 5, because now you know your z's, you can solve it for x. So let's go back. Let's sub z is equal to 2 into equation, which one looks easier? Yeah, they don't really matter, into equation 4, which was 3x plus 7z being equal to 26. So I have 3x plus 7 times 2 being equal to 26, 3x plus 14 equal to 26, bring him over so that you get 3x being equal to 26 minus 14 which is 12, divide both sides by the number in front of x, x is equal to 4. 
Okay, so now I found my second letter. So now sub x is equal to 4 and z being equal to 2 into equation 1, 2 or 3 because these are the only equations that have um, y remaining in them and I need to find out why. I have z, I had 4. Okay, what does the question ask? Solve the simultaneous equations, which means you must solve it for every letter. I have my x, I have my z, I need my y. So I'm going to sub it into equation 1. I could have picked 1, 2 or 3. 1 looks the easiest, so I'm going to pick that one. x plus y plus a z being equal to 16. 4 plus y plus 2 is 16. So y plus 6 is 16. Bring him over, it becomes minus 6. Or subtract 6 from both sides, if that's how you know it. And you get y is equal to 10. So my three solutions, x is equal to 4, y is equal to 10, z is equal to 2. So important that you put the boxes around them or in some way highlight your answers so that the corrector of your paper is not trawling through your work looking for the answers. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new programme in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting-edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.